2015, I presented stuff about CBD here, and that was based on working with actually a close colleague of Oren Davinsky called Elizabeth Thiel. Um, and I've been uh, certainly an advocate uh, of moving forward with uh, CBD to treat our patients. Um, I think what struck me about that uh, talk was the sort of very kind of sober analysis he gave of, of what CBD can deliver to patients. He's the world's expert on it, and he's cautioning people about having too many expectations about it. And I suppose that's really where I fit, see myself fitting very much into that uh, profile. Uh, as an individual, as a citizen, as a, a dad, as a husband, as a, um, you know, just a member of the community, uh, I'd be quite a liberal person. I you know, used uh, recreational cannabis when I was in college, like lots of people. I like a glass of wine. I can't move if I don't have a cup of coffee in the morning. I'm not anti-drug in any way, okay? But as a doctor, uh, it's a requirement based on the Hippocratic Oath that I, I use scientific data to make decisions and that I, I primarily do not cause harm to patients. And at the moment, you know, the, the, the people for whom CBD has been proven to work scientifically is relatively small. And that's not to say that the science in the future will not show us who else will benefit from it, but it's at the moment it's very relatively small, and therefore what you will come a, coming across, suppose, I, I suppose, in your interactions with doctors is what you perceive as being blocking or too conservative or they don't want to know or, you know, they're keeping this. For, one of the things I constantly hear is that we're all in the pocket of big pharma, that the big pharmaceutical companies are telling us, oh, don't give patients CBD. And that's just... That's just not true. Uh, in fact, what's interesting about what's happening now is that we're moving into the era of what I call big weed. I mean, some of the, uh, some of the people getting, putting money behind uh, cannabis products are very, very wealthy individuals. And there are very large companies now who have a lot to gain by pumping up the story of the value of CBD. Now, I'd also say this. I am only, if I have any expertise in this, it's literally only in epilepsy. I know nothing about CBD for a whole range of other issues chronic pain, uh, mood alteration, uh, ADHD. So if you have questions about that, I'm not the person to ask. I, I have as much knowledge as you do as a dad. You know, if I had a child with CBD, if I had a child with uh, ADHD, I might be interested in finding out some information about it. Fine, but I'm not the person to ask about that. I would also say that, again, if I was a dad and I had a, a young uh, child with severe epilepsy, I might have a completely different attitude to this. <coughs> You know, I might be going out there finding uh, a product and ignoring the advice of my doctor or whatever. I could come back completely differently, but I'm trying to, you know, it's always a, it's a challenge to put yourself, separate yourself into the professional, the so-called expert with a, a particular duty of care not to cause harm. And then the dad who empathizes with people who have very difficult, they themselves have difficult epilepsy and their children have it. So I would ask you to just, that, that's usually the battle that's going on in my head when I talk to patients about this, and I hope you understand it in those terms. Um, anyway, the final thing I will say is, 18 months ago, the minister promised, uh, on foot of a lot of agitation from patients, families, and indeed people like myself, he said, look, please make some of this drug available for people with the worst form of epilepsy, people who are, whose lives are in danger with their severity of their epilepsy. And the minister said, oh yeah, I'll do that. And... We're all sitting here today, and this so-called access program hasn't happened. Now, I'd like to be able to stand here and say that there's a complete dereliction of duty. The people in the Department of Health don't know what they're doing. You know, that would be the, that would be the headline <laughs> news tomorrow morning. You know, expert slams the HSE and the Department of Health. But that's not what's going on. Um, in fairness, I've had a lot of detailed conversations as late as yesterday with the Department of Health. The reality is that it's extremely difficult to find a reliable product on the market. Now, what I mean by that is, and, I, and, I, and I, th this is information I'm learning all the time, this plant is one of the most complex plants we know. It's got 540 different compounds in it. Um, what we're trying to do is to extract one compound of those 540, distill it down into a, as pure a form as possible, make it into a, an oil such that the one that was made today is exactly the same as the one that's made tomorrow. And what I recently learned is that not only is that a very difficult process, it actually, if the temperature is one degree different today compared to tomorrow, it'll go wrong. So the idea that you can go to some company that's got, a, you know, an artisan pharmaceutical, you know, thing out the back garden and he's making this stuff 
and he's swearing by it. There's just no way that I would take that from my own child. You need to be absolutely sure that what you're getting day to day is exactly the same amount. And to give an example, my friend Elizabeth Thiel in Boston, who um, was aware that patients were taking lots of different forms of CBD oil, she asked them all, well, just bring me in a small sample. And she got 25 different compounds, okay? And when they analyzed them in the lab, only four of them had any CBD in it at all. So there's unscrupulous people out there. They will write the word CBD. They would, not only would they write the word CBD on the oil bottle, they'll also say that it's got a good manufacturing certificate, and it doesn't. So there are unscrupulous people out there willing to prey on the idea that there's people out there desperate for an answer for their epilepsy, and I understand that. But again, in my sober analysis as a, not as a dad, but as a doctor, I'm telling you that this is a very difficult process. And the department have been, have been trying to source a form that they can absolutely stand over and say that this is safe, not only is it safe, but it's got the right amount of CBD in it, and not only is the right amount of CBD, but it's between one day to the next, the samples you're getting have the right amount. So that's where we are at the moment, and I think we are close to making a deal with a Canadian company. Um, and once that deal goes through, we will be able to, to, to uh, start this uh, uh, rapid access program. The second piece is Epidiolex, which has just been um, granted a license in North America, is going through a similar regulatory process here in Ireland, or at least in Europe, called the European Medicines Agency. And we expect that it will be uh, available on the market properly by this late spring or early summer of next year. So that means it becomes a drug like any other drug that we can prescribe. And then it goes into the same lists of other drugs that we use for epilepsy. And it will be, as Professor Dvinsky says, very good for some, not so good for others. But it will be on the list of drugs to try. And I certainly uh, would be uh, of the same opinion. If you've gone through all the, the drugs that we know to be valuable, even if we don't know this uh, drug works, it would certainly be on the list to try. So everybody certainly, but it's really about expectations. I think he's right. I think in terms of focal epilepsy, the data is poor.